Hello, I thought I would do another um, video on my uh, 2005 Mini Cooper S. Um, thanks so much everyone for the really nice sort of comments and likes and new subscriptions. Um, they've been really appreciated. Um, uh, this time I thought I would do a little bit of a quick video of kind of some top buying tips with uh, hopefully my car which is, is nice and uh, clean and standard. Um, so if you're in the market for an R50, uh, R52 convertible or an R53 Mini Cooper S, uh, here are a few little hints and tips which should help you um, in buying a really good clean and straight example and save yourself lots of money in the process. Um, as I say, my car is not perfect but it has just ticked over 125,000 miles. Uh, you can see an R56 in the background which is my mum's. Um, and uh, it's been a car that has given me so much sort of um, uh, pleasure owning. It hasn't actually cost a great deal, um, and it's probably one of the cleanest uh, daily daily cars um, uh, out there. Um, uh, and it's because I, I bought a really good one, um, and I paid a little bit more for it. I think I paid um, about three thousand uh, pounds. Gosh, a few years ago, about five or six years ago now, um, it's probably worth that about about that now, to be honest. Um, and they're only going up uh, uh, in in value. So um, here are just a few tips um, around uh, my uh, Mini Capress and uh, buying a really good example. I'll turn around and first of all, um, probably the first thing that you want to do is have a good walk around the car. You want to check the tyres. Um, so uh, generally, um, uh, Michelin's are very good. Um, uh, originally came uh, with run flat tyres on the R53. Um, I've put some Kumos on, which are probably very, very mid-range. They're probably not the best, uh, but they're not the worst. But try and just make sure that your tyres are all matching. Um, and also, whilst you're down here, just have a little look at uh, brake um, discs and calipers and pads. Make sure everything looks fairly okay. Mine are, are fairly new. Um, the calipers are, are looking a little bit uh, used, and um, there's a little bit of pitting going on. But um, uh, just make sure that they're they're all okay. Uh, minis are surprisingly heavy on on brakes, particularly front um, uh, discs. So worth having a little look at that. And similarly around the around the rear as well. You know you can check your your discs and your calipers. Um, one little uh, sort of tip is uh, these little springs here are known as anti-rattle clips. Um, and if these look really, really tired, they look quite perished um, or damaged, uh, it can cause a really annoying knocking sound um, from, uh, from particularly from the rear um, uh, wheels, from the rear brakes. So definitely something worth checking out. You can tell I've driven this car recently because there's a good, uh, good little bit of brake dust there. So that's probably one thing uh, to, to have a look at is your wheels and your, your tires and your brakes on your Mini. In terms of body, um, there isn't a huge amount to really worry about and um, there aren't many major rough spots. Um, one of the first things which will be really obvious is on pre-facelift cars you normally get some bubbling around here and this is where water has got trapped in the bottom of the uh, the, the rear boot handle. Um, you'll see it bubbling over. It's not a really expensive fix but it is quite annoying. Generally the uh, galvanised uh, pr sort of process on the, the rear boot lid is better on post-facelift uh, cars. Um, so that's just something to, to, to think about. Actually, whilst we're around at the at the back, um, just a couple of little telltale things to think about. So the first thing is uh, your rear exhaust. So mine doesn't sit particularly straight. Um, and uh, it was on its original exhaust when I bought it and it has been replaced with a BMW original uh, and it's still not massively straight. I wouldn't worry about that too much um, if you think that the car has had a bash just because the rear exhaust isn't perfectly straight really isn't the end of the world. However, some little telltale signs are probably these little panels in here. So if you go in uh, to, to the panel um, around the back, there should be a first aid kit in there. Um, and once you pull that out, um, you should be able to see a number of production stickers so for example if I pull this very carefully because it's still in its plastic <laughs> and I really don't want to rip it there we go you can see a number of build stickers down there relating to the car um, and also I'm um, just checking um, in terms of down here there shouldn't really be any any sort of signs of any any damage um, uh, there if there is then the car's probably had a, had a bash from the rear end it's kind of a very easy telltale sort of sign I'll just pop that back in there. Uh, as with everything, R50 and R53 is a little bit fiddly. Um, so that's probably a bit of a telltale sign. One other thing that you can notice sometimes is a little bit of rust build up in these hinges up here. Uh, as you can see on, on mine, there is a little bit of, um, looks like paint wear here, but it's not rust. 
um, uh, just on these two hinges. But again, it's not the end of the world, but it doesn't mean that the car's had a bash, but it probably just means that um, it needs uh, a little bit of uh, attention. Um, let me pull that, pull that down. There we go. Um, walking around uh, to the uh, to, to the, the front of the car, I think I'm going to pop the bonnet and, uh, and give you a little bit of a few tips under the bonnet um, of the car. And as I say, I mean this one is uh, is a 2005 facelift with 125,000 miles, so it is not concourse. It's not perfect, but it is a nice clean uh, example. Get my finger out of the way there. So what do you want to look for under the bonnet of your Mini Cooper S to make sure that it's uh, that it's it's well looked after? Well, a few weak points, first of all, is probably going to take you around to here, the coolant expansion tank. This seal here has a tendency to get quite weak and will start weeping. At its very worst, you'll start getting coolant out and your engine will start to overheat. So just make sure that it looks like this one, nice and clean. Um, uh, you can pick these up for buttons, either as a standard part or you can get like an aftermarket market version which is made out of um, like an aluminium um, uh, which could work as, as just as well and um, but you just want to check uh, this this seal around here and obviously you want to make sure that your, your coolant is in between the max and the min um, uh, levels uh, here on the on the side so that's something straight away to to think about um, the other thing whilst you're here is probably you want to check oil level but you've got to be really careful when you pull um, the dipstick out it should come out nice and easily when you want to push it back in um, you want to very very gently feed it in they have a habit of snapping and um, these if you start to see any cracks on the dipstick it's not the end of the world you can get a replacement very very cheap but the last thing you want to do is be pulling the dipstick out of the uh, out of the bottom of the the, the, the sump um, it's a right faff. So have a little look at the quality of it. Check that there's oil on it. Check the quality of the oil as well. Fairly standard stuff. Tri-Tech engines, particularly the supercharged ones, like their oil. So it's something to, to bear in mind. The other thing that you'll notice is, and my car is probably a good example of one that's well used, is the radiator. You've even got a couple of wasps in there. Um, they're actually surprisingly vulnerable. So check that the veins aren't significantly damaged. Um, you know, There's always going to be the few little dents like mine has, but check that it isn't significantly significantly damaged and there are no um, leaks you can always um, ask to have the car up on a ramp potentially um, and uh, and look at it look at it that way um, so that's something to, to think about in terms of crash damage um, it's always very useful to have a little look at these um, uh, struts here they're really really structural as are here and here check any signs of any of them being painted or them being new or replacement um, parts they should stand out quite quite easily um, uh, another thing whilst you're around here is have a look at the suspension turrets themselves. These minis have a habit of um, being really, really firm on the front turrets and sometimes creating like a mushroom effect, a dooming, if you like, of the turrets. It might, at its very worst, require um, heavy rework or replacement of this area, so it's worth having a having a look at it. Um, again, m mine are fairly fairly straight and, straight and true. Um, equally, when you have a look in here, it's normal to have a little bit of weight like this um, you know, it shows that the stop strut mounts are under pressure these ones were replaced earlier this year um, but um, if they're really badly damaged or cracking um, then uh, then that's something to, to uh, also straight away sort of flag and, and keep a, keep an eye on um, under the bonnet um, probably the last thing to think about is around your bonnet um, uh, sorry is around your bumper fit so if I come around here your standard car should have a little piece of plastic here kind of pushing the bumper forward you should have a number of clips here um, and it should be fairly well attached to the plastic frame in front you can see I'm doing that and mine's not really doing anything my bumper has been repainted we had some lacquer peel on it um, which I talked about in my last video actually there's a little bit of lacquer peel still on the scuttle um, um, but uh, the, the um, uh, bumper should be should be fairly solid it's surprising how many bumpers have been refitted uh, quite badly and are, and are quite um uh poorly poorly done um and are quite loose and they cause a number of rattles and they're really really annoying as well as sort of being a sign that the car might have had just a respray or it could have had a, a a bit of a bash so it's something to something to think about similarly wheel arch lining should be nice and sturdy as you can see here um 
that you know they should be should be nice and solid. Um, uh, if they're loose or if clips are missing, then it's probably start uh, start time to ask ask questions. Um, uh, so that's probably enough under the under the bonnet um, uh, to to think about. Um, just walking around the side of the car actually, exhausts can be quite expensive to replace. So it's worth popping your head under the car and checking your exhausts. So um, probably the, the easiest way to do it is from the back. Uh, my exhaust is probably a couple of years old now, but you'll be able to see that there are two back boxes normally um, on the standard cars with a heat shield in the middle, like that. Um, and again, um, they have a tendency to rot from the inside out, so it's worth giving them a little check over and just see if they're nice and solid. Um, as I say, these ones are only a couple of years old, so they should be, they should be okay. Super. We'll hop on the inside of the car um, and we'll just do a couple of little things inside. Now, there aren't really many things that you need to be aware of inside the car. Um, uh, there are very, very few things that kind of easily break. Obviously, check that everything works. Um, that's kind of a bit of a given. There's a lot of electronics on here. We're kind of going into the era of multiplex um, uh, wiring um, with minis of, of this age. So you just want to check that they uh, that they all work um, and that they're all all okay. Um, the trim on a Mini isn't brilliant, so you might see the odd little mark down. For example, in the footwell, you can see where mine's picked up a couple of little scuffs from uh, shoes coming in and out. The plastic is quite easily scratchable, so it's not a deal breaker, I would say. They all kind of have, have that, unless it's a super, super low mileage, very pampered um, uh, car. Um, in terms of turning the car on, so you should have a couple of clicks. First click will do your radio, um, which actually in this instance I'll just turn off. Um, and you'll be able to see your dials come on uh, there. It's a very hot day today, as you can see, well into, into summer, 24 degrees. Um, your next click should then turn on your ignition. And you should have all of your warning lights go out pretty quickly um, uh, for, for those that, that pop up. And then in terms of turning the, um, turning the engine on, it should then be one quick turn and it should fire up straight away and those uh, warning lights should go out obviously other than the, the handbrake light um, uh, very very quickly um, a couple of things to think about um, in terms of electronics that are a little bit um, uh, iffy sometimes. So the first thing is if the car has had its battery wound down um, and its battery is very, very weak, you might see the car do some really strange things. Like for example, the top of the windows might drop slightly um, and then get stuck in that position. It's not the end of the world, but it's probably a sign of a car that's not very uh, not very well looked after. It probably hasn't run for a, for a little while. Equally, things like the um, uh, the uh, the digital readouts, if I can remember what they're called. Um, the pixels should be fine. Question if the pixels aren't working. It's generally that um, they might have been tampered with, but generally it might just be that they've got old and they started to started to fail. They don't generally um, uh, do so. I think they're fairly cheap to replace. Um, obviously, mine's a, a Corona Pack car, so there's an extra extra set there. But um, uh, it's just something to look out for. It's something that you probably want to avoid. And equally with the um, with the stereo as well, you just want to make sure that all of the um, all of the, the pixels are working um, on, on there and that all of the speakers are working as well. It's surprising how many of these cars have um, maybe had uh, uh, someone that's liked to play their music quite loud recently and <laughs> they've blown a speaker or two. Uh, generally there is uh, two speakers in each front door um, with the tweeter at the top there and then there are two at the rear of the the car um, there on each side behind the um, behind the front seat, um, unless you go for the very fancy Harman Kardon, um, which mine does not have. Um, most of the Cooper S's in particular have air conditioning. Um, it should blow nice and cool quite quickly, um, as my car uh, is. Um, uh, check that the fan turns up in speed. It could be a failed resistor. 
uh, if uh, it, it um, is not doing that and equally check it runs from cold to hot and back to cold nice and quickly. Um, the aircon system isn't the quietest on an R53, I've driven a few of these cars and they are all quite noisy. The compressor is quite loud and you can hear um, the, the aircon whirring away um, but it, it is kind of the nature of the beast, uh, it's nothing to worry about. One other thing whilst the car is stationary that you've just got to think about is um, uh, the power steering. It's a really odd system on a Mini um, R50. Um, it's an electro-hydraulic system, so it's hydraulic but with an electric pump uh, not running off the, off the, directly off the engine. There's a very small cooling fan that sits underneath the, uh, underneath the engine, um, and if that fails, then uh, your power steering is going, to, is going to struggle. So what you want to do is, whilst the car is sat um, on a, a driveway on a road, you want to turn the car lock to lock. And you'll hear a whine. <laughs> you can hear the whine. It's a very distinctive mini whine. I'll do it again and shut up. You want to check that the steering is nice and smooth. There could be an issue with the bearing um, behind uh, this panel. Uh, if it isn't, if it's a bit clunky. Um, if you hear like a groaning sound, that's likely to be your top struts um, failing on the on the front suspension. And of course, if that whine is any louder really than this car, then you've started got to think that the car might have a, a power steering failure, potentially a power steering pump failure. It's not the end of the world. There's lots of um, uh, scrap minis, sadly. Um, out there where you can pillage them for parts. There's lots out there, but it is a bit of a faff and like all of these minis Labour is the thing that's really expensive if you take it to a garage because they are a bit fiddly to um, to, to, to use um, and, and work on so they're probably just a few top tips and Flip you back around. There we go. Um, there's just a, a few really quick um, sort of top tips, if you like, if you're in the market of buying a Mini, um, an R50, an R52, or in the case of my car, an R53. Um, I absolutely, I think, as I said in my first video, I absolutely love my car. I think it is brilliant. It's great fun. It's not perfect, but it's a really clean example. It took me a good while to find it, and this was a good few years ago now. Um, now that I've got it, I will not let it go. I really like it. Um, but just some of these these tips should help you um, find a really good car. Um, for me, the big thing is just making sure service history. It doesn't necessarily need to be BMW dealer service history. At the end of the day, the cars are, are, are well over 10, some instances approaching 20 years old. Um, they're likely to be out of the BMW dealer network, but make sure that it's got some sort of specialist or reputable garage history. Um, that's really important. And just check the condition of the car. You know, these cars at first can look really good, but if you look under the bonnet, if you start to see things that, that don't look quite right, um, they wear very, very well, other than a few bits of interior trim that start to <laughs> start to show the odd, uh, odd mark or scratch. Um, but generally, um, uh, you, if you see a car that looks a bit baggy um, and doesn't look quite right, um, then walk away. It will cost you more than the car's worth, I think, unfortunately. Um, in a future video, I will uh, take you on a bit of a test drive and you can uh, see what hopefully a fairly good Mini um, Cooper S is like to drive and some of the things on a test drive you might want to look for. Um, and as I say um, in my first video, I'm a volunteer at the British Motor Museum. I absolutely love my cars, especially classic British cars. So I'm hoping to do a few more videos uh, um, uh, at the, the museum uh, and at a few events over the the summer as well. Um, if you see me at the Festival of the Unexceptional um, this weekend, um, uh, then you know please do give me a wave and, and say hello and thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. So I think that's it for now. Thank you very much and take care.